Well, hello and good evening, everybody. It is Tuesday, February 27th, 2024. Welcome to the only show about Spartan Dogs, hosted by Spartan Dogs. This is Sparta MSU. I'm your host, Jason Strayhorn, along with my co-host, J.U. Choo Choo Culkrick. <laughs> yes, sir. If this is your first time, we want to welcome you to the show. If this is not, we want to thank you for your loyalty. And look, the chat, I see Kat, Harriet, Sean, Lynn, look, already in there. It's already live, Chew, and we're ready to roll. Let us know where you're watching us from. Please do that so we know what's happening. And don't forget to follow us on all of our social media handles at This is Sparta MSU while we take, take a sip from the cup. Yeah, Kat, what it do? What up, doe? I we we got a little ding ding ding. Cat plate got those candle holders. <laughs> yes, she did. Yeah, yeah. Ding ding ding. You I know, like I mean, that. A little reciprocity that, around that here. Goes that that Lola Bean account clicking. Cat, appreciate you. <laughs> yes, everything. We definitely appreciate everybody uh, joining us here tonight. And look, you know, it's been a big weekend. You know, we're. This this month, this Black History Month, and we got this Black excellent. I got, got my hoodie, so you gotta get you one of these, man. You gotta get we'll, these. Put it, we'll, we'll put it in the payroll, you know. And uh, <laughs> Bradenton, Florida, okay. Chicago West Loop once again. We always see that. What's up, Tommy? In the West and look, I mean, man, I, I just I know a little bit about Bradenton, Florida. I have a soft spot for Chicago, man. I do, I love you. Chicago. And you know what? I know people are going to get on me here, but I also have a soft spot for Chicago sports teams as well. You know? Chicago sports teams as yeah. in what? The Bulls? The Bears? Bears. The Blackhawks? You know? I, I just have a soft spot for Chicago sports. The lovable losers, the Cubs. Oh, all yeah. Them. But, you know, yeah. I'm Buffalo through and through, though. But I was rooting for – I Same was company. rooting for the for the for the um, Red Wings when they played the Blackhawks on Sunday night. My my guy Patrick Kane with that with that uh, game winning goal in overtime. There you go, Patty Kane, a Buffalo a Buffalo boy. Really? Yeah. <laughs> the Buffalo. Speaking of Buffalo boys, someone Cat says she got a, a a Colorado coworker ordering the Sparta gear. Hey man. Hey. That's kind of warm out. It, it's very toasty. You know, I'm, I'm wearing it right now. I might start sweating during the show, but that's okay. <laughs> we I coming. Go Cubs, go. <laughs> See, I made someone happy. Usually yes, everyone's jumping did. on me for my love of sports teams, but I made someone happy today. I appreciate it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I used to cook Sunday meals for Kyle Cook, and that is our special guest. We're going to talk to him in a moment. Harriet Dean, you know, I mean, <laughs> always – Taking care of the team, I'm telling you, in uh, more ways than one. Just the support is just that's how you know. That's how you know you made it when you came home from uh, practice on that Sunday and had that Harriet meal waiting for you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a somebody. <laughs> We're gonna talk. Look, this weekend it was a good weekend, man. The Spartan athletics. The Stray was up there, man. I had a good time visiting East Lansing. You know, everybody's going down south this time of year. I'm I'm going up north, man. I'm coming right out there. I, I was trying to get Ju, but Ju was busy. And yeah. was, yeah, I was you, busy doing things, man. Being fathers, you know. You, but you sh you should have been here today. It was seventy two. I heard, I heard. But what's tomorrow going to be? Seventy couple. It was today. <laughs> <laughs> what about tomorrow? Tomorrow, I think it's going to be high fifties, mid. You know, high fifties, mid. Mid, 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 and then the yeah. next day. It's getting, spring has sprung, my man. I hope so. I was spring looking at sprung. the weather. I'm you talking bad. about, you know, I always you talk bad. about it. they like, look, look, our man Jordan Maine from Maine Financial, he was telling me, like, hey, it's 73. He's driving around the lake, having a good time. I mean, this yeah, is. I almost went golfing today. You should have. <laughs> 72 degrees. But the important thing, let's get right into it, man. Gymnastics. That's the story. They go back to back for Big Ten championship wins once again. Regular season title for the Big Ten Championship goes to the Michigan State Spartan Gymnastics Program. How about that, Chew? Back to back, and the and the better one is this this year. Their their lone 
that by themselves Big Ten champs. Last year, they were co-Big Ten champs, and then this year, they took that next step to become, you know, just a solo Big Ten champs. And it just, it's just a, a testament to Coach Rowe and the PIP program that he's building and all the people that support him. I know Harriet, she, you know, she's a big, you know, um, member of the gymnastics program there, but you can just talk about, you know, let's – if you go back a few years, you know, the dark place this uh, program was in and now the light is shining bright on these on these young women um, in this program. It's something to be celebrated. It's something that's really cool, something that's really special and big, big, big shout out to all of them. Oh, man. You know, had a chance to spend some time with several of the, the gymnastics parents. After the hockey game, actually, on Saturday, they were hanging out. I mean, they're just on cloud nine, and they deserve to be because what they've been able to accomplish is just unprecedented. Just don't see a lot of back-to-back titles anywhere, let alone, you know, in gymnastics at Michigan State. It's awesome, you know, and, and yeah. God bless these girls. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of stiff competition, you know, within the conference itself. And it's going to get even tougher next year when you when the expansion, you know, the conference expansion happens, because you're going to have a a school like UCLA, you know, in the Big Ten, who's predominantly a a powerhouse in gymnastics overall. So it's going to be really exciting. And uh, any way that, you know, people can support these girls uh, from, uh being a fan from going there watching to, you know, donating to the program so they can, you know, have the facility, have the equipment and everything so they can compete at the national level. You see, you see what the support so far, you know, the past calls have done is, is, is really created that stability with the program has created, you know, that social cohesiveness with the team, because like we talked about gymnastics is a sport about enthusiasm, about teamwork, about being a family. And that's what it has the past couple years. And now it's going to have to get better and better because, you know, we're going to have the UCLA's, the USC, you know, coming to this conference. And, it, it, and um, you know, those schools are predominantly powerhouses in gymnastics. That's right. You're not, you're, you are not joking. It don't get any easier. Conference le- realignment ever present while we continue our Big Ten championship march. Uh, you know, we just don't know how the Big Ten is going to look right now. It's going from the 14 teams to 18 next year, as Jay, you was talking about. But who knows? 2025, it might be 20. 25, who knows? There are a lot of rules. Show the video, man. Let's go. <laughs> Man, I like that music. Man, brought a little tear to my eye, man. Look, the Spartans secured the number one seed at next month's Big Ten Championships hosted at Jenison Fieldhouse. Ooh, we got it. We got a cleaning to do if it's going to be at Genesis. We got to clean that place up. And if the, if the big stage is going to be on us, the big sombrero, the big media, everything's going to be. Harry, you better get out to Genesis. He start cleaning that place. Sweep the corners. <laughs> Sweep the corners. I'm telling you, we got to upgrade that. I mean, they're winning despite the facilities for them, For honestly. Let's be real about that. And up next, MSU hosts New Hampshire in the non-conference action on Friday, March 1st, coming up this Friday at 1 p.m for the Spartans annual pink meet. So if you're in town or not, get by there. So, hey man, thank you. Look, we got Steve Smith in Philadelphia right now. He's not watching the show, but he's he's tuned in. So he he just dropped 20. We appreciate that. The collection plate is passed around once again to, and then Sean, every team's doing well, but football and basketball right now. I got to get back. On one accord, I'm tired of money sports being mediocre. Ooh. Oh, jeez. Ooh. Shots fired, huh? Man. Somebody's upset. Hey, Sean. Money sports being mediocre. When you use that word mediocre, that's that's like, ooh. Ooh, yeah. Because, you know, that's like going in. I don't want no mediocre. Mm. I don't want no mediocre. There's a song. Look, men's basketball, speaking of mediocre, drops a game. Versus Ohio State at the buzzer, 60 to 57. Two, I was at this game. There was a lot of hype going in because Xavier Booker was able to get his first start. He was doing so well. He was balling. 
but didn't play in the last minutes of that ball game. I think the eight, eight to 10 minute mark, he didn't play. And, uh, you know, I'm not saying that's the only cause of the loss, but Michigan State loses by buzzer beater, three pointer to be exact. Um, just a tough loss. Yeah, you know the, the crazy thing. I didn't even uh, I didn't even see the buzzer beater. Uh, I I was watching the game the second half about 15 minutes in the second half. I was like, oh, they got this game. So I uh, we just got a new bicycle for my daughter. So we went outside. We're you know pet, trying to teach her to pedal and everything, thinking the Spartans are taking care of business here. And then come to find out that you know they didn't um they didn't win um uh, you know it, it's tough you know that's loose dropping back-to-back games uh games that they needed uh you know and i think was was the iowa game at home as well so back-to-back games at home uh they they dropped and uh and it's gonna get tougher on saturday they go they go down to west lafayette and play a very good purdue team uh and they're gonna need that one more like big victory they're gonna need one more victory for you know seeding purposes for the the tournament um i still think they're gonna get in the tournament i think they're probably an eight or nine seed in the tournament um right now so but uh you know they're gonna have to get it together they're gonna have to figure it figure it out and at the end of the day i I hear people giving you know coach izzo you know izzo's out coach izzo this isn't like football this isn't like, you know, football where it truly takes 11 players to make a play happen. Basketball, you got to play defense, you got to score. That's right. what you got to do. And you can turn that game to a one-on-one, two-on, two-on-five, whatever way you want to do it. These players are going to be the ones that are going to have to decide what type of season that they want to have. Despite, you know, whatever the lineup is, despite all those different things, these players are going to be the one that, truly defines what their season is because basketball is a sport that one person can get hot and take over the game. So that's what it's going to be. Izzo wasn't up, isn't out there rebounding. Izzo wasn't out there, but I get it. The coach is his job is to put his players in the best position to be successful. But at the end of the day, when the play is called, you have to execute. Mm. You do have to execute. You know, we ain't going to say nothing bad about our Tom Izzo now. That's not what we do on this show. This is a family-friendly show, and we are not going to go there. I know people are talking out there. He's this, he's that. His, you know, we always talk January, February, Izzo. It's coming up. The players have to buy in. You know, like you said, coaches, coach, the players absolutely play. And, you know, shame on him for trusting the seniors, the guys who've been in the fire uh, in the stretch of these ball games to be able to come out with the victory, you know, when you look at Ohio state, I mean, you have a guy in Jake Diebler. I mean, this guy is 37 years old. He just, he's been on the job for two weeks, just two weeks down in Ohio state. I think they fired the, the, the Holtman. They, they fired their coach and the, and uh, Diebler, yeah. his first, his first game, he beats yeah. the Purdue team, uh, yeah. you know, and then they lose another one. And then they come into the Breslin and beat uh, Michigan state. But That's you know, like I said, it, it, it's, it's very big and it's, it's a game of runs It's a game of, you know, figuring out and understanding it. And, I put the onus on the players. They're going to have to be the ones that come out and they're going to have to, they're going to have to play. It's, it's that simple. They have to play. They have to rebound. They have to score. The bigs got to play like bigs. Yeah. Michigan state has a proud tradition of having big guys down there being physical. You can't be, that's the, that's the problem these days, Stray. Everyone wants to be cute. Everyone wants to be cute. Do we have a big coach though. We gotta get well, a, coach. a big coach. But still, listen, I, I know. Like in my, you know, if I'm if I'm, I'm seven feet, you know, you know, we we playing like Shaq did, right? Uh, exactly. We tear the rim off that thing, right? Exactly. Every time, but I don't, I don't know what it is. You know, it's just, oh man, I, I, I do want to blame an unnamed trustee for going to the bathroom. We were up ten, came back, and then we were like tied. That that unnamed trust, you know who you are. We're not going to get into that, but man, I'm with you, Johnny. Hey, you too. You, you weren't Johnny watching C. the game, and I'll blame me because I was in the venue. Everybody, there's a lot of blame to go around. It has nothing to do with the basketball. How about the team fact that you came for the game? I came for the game. You weren't there for fault. any other games, and so you came. And then look at us. Look, I mean, look. I went to the wrestling meet. They won in senior day. I went to hockey senior day, not the one on Friday, the Saturday hockey against Ohio State. Won that in a blowout senior day and so like you know i wanted to cap it off with a hat trick and chew it just didn't it just didn't work okay 
and okay, blame myself. I blame myself. For it. <laughs> As you said, you know, looks like a nine seed right now for Michigan State basketball. There's a lot that we need that they can be left to be desired here. 17 and 11, three and seven in the quad one, five and four in quad two. Jewel. Woo. Yeah. And uh, I think, uh, you know, Johnny C said, and I said this, I think last year in the beginning of the year, Izzo needs to bring that suit back. <laughs> I, I, I've been all saying he's it. got to do is wear the suit. That's Thank all you, he's Johnny. Do. That's all he's got to do. <laughs> Everyone wants to be cute nowadays. Everyone wants to be comfortable. You got to be, be, you got to be comfortable, uncomfortable. Yeah, comfortable being uncomfortable. That's absolutely right, man. And we got to move on because look, we got to talk. Some you know some positive stuff right here, and I just covered a little bit of it a minute ago. But hockey does beat Ohio State on Senior Day. MSU hockey now ranks six in the country. Man, they're on a roll. Next game Friday and Saturday versus Wisconsin. Yeah, uh, as Coach Manning would say, high State. Uh, you know that was a split. This uh, you know on Friday night they weren't able to get the job done. But when it really counted on Senior Day, you want to send those seniors out the right way. We all know this. We all had our senior days, and uh, it was just something special that you want to do. And uh, they were able to get it done, get the job done on Saturday, and uh, salvage you know the series by having that split with Ohio State and uh, go to Wisconsin. It's not going to be easy. They're 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 in for it again. They need another. Um, really uh, another solid win. They need another win and then they win the Big Ten, you know, so they have to beat that win at Wisconsin because the Big Ten titles on the line, you know, these next these next couple games. So they have to take this game and uh, run with it, play like they can play. Yeah, I, you know, I, I, all I saw was, was, was guys giving a body up, playing. I mean, there was a power play there in the second period which really stretched out. I think there was two points, two goals scored in within uh, 45 seconds. Uh, this team, Adam Nightingale's got this team humming on so many levels. You see the senior day videos here. That, that, that right, I mean, how can you not tear up when you see that stuff? You know, this is a lot of these guys last time being on the ice in that uniform at home, obviously, and their parents are there with them to celebrate that moment. It, 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 nothing like going out on top with a victory, right? Absolutely. And uh, you just all smiles all around. And it's been absolutely electric at Munn all season long. Shout out to Spartan fans for showing up to Munn. Shout out to the Munsters, the the Spartan brass out there. Uh, you know, it was an absolute, um, you know, great, great weekend for Spartan hockey. And oh, uh, look at the kiss in the ice. Look at that. They don't want to get stuck. <laughs> like a Christmas story. <laughs> <laughs> no one's tongue got stuck in mud, right? <laughs> there was some controversy. So who started that kiss in the court in Breslin? And, you know, we'll, we were really going to dive into that on Thursday show because our guest is going to talk about that in detail. It's more to come on that. But in, women's basketball does crush Rutgers 93 to 57, Chu. Who they crush? Rutgers. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. That's my favorite, Tony Soprano. Yeah, yeah absolutely. These these ladies are on fire. And like I like we stated last week, right now they're they're playing, they're, put, they're positioning themselves for a seed. And you know, I don't know how they're not ranked right now with the you know the type of the play that they they're cons uh, consistently in the top five, top four in scoring in all of the NCAA for women's basketball. Um, they're they're a prolific offense, and they get it done on defense as well. Uh, you know, if you're going to be on Coach Freilich's team, we say this all the time: you better be in shape because you're going to be pressing, you're going to be running. It's going to be a high tempo um, type of game. Yeah, no doubt about. It. I mean, she freilich has got it rolling down there with Michigan State women's basketball. They set the team mark for single season three pointers made. 253 threes? Come on, man. Program record. Putting up shots. Mm. 
Look like me and you out there playing 21 against each other. I, I think we would have 253 shots taken. <laughs> right. <laughs> I don't know about me. Right. You know, next game for, for the ladies is on uh, Thursday coming up against Illinois. So, you know, that, that, that this team, like you said, that's a, I'm confused. I don't know. They're not ranked. Why? Right. You got to call somebody. Like what you guys have heard so far, please click that like and subscribe button. I know everybody's thinking about getting into that sun, go hanging out at the golf course because it was 73 degrees in Michigan and everybody is doing what they need to do because it's almost March, but we're celebrating this still. It's still February and there's still a couple of days left in February. This week, you know, there's a lot to talk about and a lot to get into, especially when we get into former football players, especially on the offensive side of the ball. But no, most importantly, when they hold that ball and they, they're center. Oh, boy. We, got, we, we go. got a center. You know what I mean? Here we go. Smartest guys on the – look, it's a cerebral position, Chew. Do not hate on you, center. You, you are right. It is. You have, to be, you have to be smart. You have to be probably the second smartest guy on the field. You have to be uh, – I like the second. I think the quarterback is has to be the smartest. He should be. And then well, yeah, should be. Yeah. <laughs> and then the center, because you know, you you're directing, you're you're having, you know, calling your protection, talking to your slides and all that stuff. But uh I think, you know, definitely the quarterback should be, like you said. Don't hate on centers, man. They, they I'm not, I love centers. Do. I love I'm all do. in. I know you do. I'm all right? in. You like to jump cut every now and then, too. Yes. I know that. Trust you me. know, so press that hole, get the linebacker. To, yeah, listen. Press the hole, it. slice the cut. <laughs> and we're going to talk to a Michigan State all-time great center here after these messages from our partners. IHOP has tons of omelets, so you can have omelets for breakfast, brunch, brinner, or even a brittle of the night snack. Try the new meaty, cheesy, and crispy mega omelet and add cinnamon dippers for a dollar. Only at IHOP. Are you confused about whose interests your financial advisor really serves? Is your advisor making decisions that benefit you, or is he just chasing a fat commission for himself? Spartan fans, you deserve a commission-free advisor with no conflicts of interest, like Trivoloni Asset Management. Trivoloni Asset Management is a fully independent, fee-only registered investment advisor. The company is even owned by a Spartan, me, Antonio Trivoloni. Visit us at SpartansMoney.com. That's SpartansMoney.com. Make an appointment today. Go green! SeatGeek is the ticketing app for fans like the High Five Strangers guy. Game-winning interception. First down. Just a nice, solid tackle. If you're in arm's length, you will be swapping skin with this extrovert. You see, he knows SeatGeek got him a great deal on tickets, so he can focus on what he does best. Smacking palms. SeatGeek handles the tickets to sports, concerts, and more, so fans can fan. Man, I love the interaction here with all the pancakes and the tickets. I just can't. It's unbelievable. It's great. But look, without further ado, Chew, hey, man, we're going to bring an offensive dynamo on the show right now. An all-time nice great. center. Yes, yes, your center. <laughs> not, not, not our center. He's our center, too, okay? <laughs> Kyle Cook joins. This is Sparta MSU. Welcome to the show, Kyle. How you doing, brother? Good. How you guys doing? Excellent. Cookie, Look. good to see you, my man. Cookie. Jason, I couldn't overhelp but hear and Jay, you just hating on us. I don't know. What's up with I, that, man? man? I don't get it. How did yeah. I hate on you? Man, yeah. I, I understand, right. Jay, you, I understand now. <laughs> You're right. Quarterbacks are the smartest guys on the field because they're not playing offensive line. That's number one. That's the reason why they're smart, okay? <laughs> right. But, man, remember all those yards you got? I said. Man. I, I, I love centers. I said, this is my center right here. No, I'm just messing with you. <laughs> that guy got me 111 yards on eight carries in a Notre Dame game. I didn't see the field after. <laughs> Man. Yeah, your last year was my first year broadcast. I was doing the sideline recording, like, chew, like you're doing now. And that, that game was, number one, it was the worst weather I've ever been in, involved in during a game, like in a suit. That suit had the R I P to the suit at the Notre Dame game, but then yeah, like 111. Like, come on, man! He went to the. We got to go to the option and throwing the ball. 
do we went do we went there the, the, the rain coming sideways it was like that forest gump you know the rain coming from upside down sideways everywhere <laughs> and we decided we wanted to throw the ball but uh <laughs> speaking about that look we're, we're there Kyle so what do you remember about that game? <laughs> You talking about the which one? The 06? Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. The the greatest comeback, the throwback game. So the 06 game, remember, I got knocked out halfway through the game. That Ooh. is right. You did. Yep. We talked about this the other day. Yes. That yes. was straight. That was way back before the rules now. So we had a bootleg play, and I blocked back, let him go, came around and cleaned up. And when I when my helmet came off during the play, oh. and so I took a knee to the temple and I was out cold on the field. Oh, so they, brought, they brought me off on the sideline and uh, um, the backup center went in there and then fumbled the snap on the first and turned it over. <laughs> and I remember being on the sideline and I didn't remember who we played the week before because it was early in the season and it was somebody I think we played Pittsburgh. Um, oh, and we yeah, never yeah, played yeah. Pittsburgh. You know, it was one of the things we never. Just never played them. So it was like, who'd you play last week? And I don't remember who I railed it off, but I thought the tunnel was on the wrong side of the stadium. <laughs> <laughs> but I remembered so all the there. calls. <laughs> but I remembered all the calls, and they put me right back in the game. So I missed one snap. <laughs> that was back in the day. Yeah. When, but when I, I, don't, I don't. I really. I remember being in the locker room after the game. Like, did we win or lose? Because I don't. It was you know. Yeah. It was bad. Back in the day. <laughs> now, hey, believe me. I mean, that's not the. Hey, that's not the only time. I mean, you know, you know how it is in the in right. the league. That happens all the time. You just don't tell anybody. Right. Oh, exactly. Right. You're in the league. You don't tell. You fighting for your. You fighting for your job. Nope. You so, go right back in the game. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You so, know? Kyle, let's go. Let's go back to the beginning. You know, from uh, Macomb, Michigan, Dakota High School. All right. Have Have, have there any ballers since you that came out of Dakota? Yeah. Well, I don't know if you remember John Stepek. <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, John was there for a little bit. He was younger than I was. Uh, and I think they got right now um, a shooting guard in the NBA for one of the teams. But he graduated high school, you know, well, even after I graduated uh, yeah. college and was done with the pro. So he young kid. Oh, okay. So w w when did your love for football begin? Um. The true love and passion, I would probably say, happened my sophomore year of high school. Um, I was around a really good group of people. Um, up till then, I had only played, you know, seventh, eighth, ninth grade football on those teams, you know, respectively on the seventh grade team, eighth grade team, ninth grade team. And it wasn't until that year that I made that jump up to varsity in right now, Dakota High School is the biggest school in the state of Michigan enrollment wise. Mm -hmm. um, they've gone on since I've graduated and won uh, state championships and such. Um, but I would say being around that group and being elevated into, um, you know, uh, upperclassmen, uh, fitting in that year, we went 10 and 2, lost in the regionals, 57, 56 at Clarkson High School. Um, you know, that, 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 that drive, that, that season, I believe, is where it came from. And then it just built on there uh, from then on out. Who was your coach there? You know, because Dakota, I, I remember going there and taking my, my boys to, to wrestling tournaments out of Dakota. It was a nice school, big, big campus. And I, I remember just like, you know, how enthused everybody around that community was about it. But who, who was your uh, the coach, I would say, that really got you interested in uh, being a, a, a player? Uh, Mike Giannone was our head coach. Mm -hmm. uh, since then, he's been at Catholic Central, and I believe now he's at Anchor Bay. Um, but I had a lot of other coaches along. He likes the, wrestling. He likes yeah, wrestling. I, I had a lot of other coaches along the route, especially in high school. Um, yeah. Guys who had played, uh, you know, Division One college football. One of my coaches played at Oklahoma. One of them played at Central Michigan. And luckily, they were both offensive linemen. So hearing from them that you have a legit chance being a sophomore of playing big time football. Mm -hmm. um, knowing what they went through, the you know the the ups, the downs, uh, how difficult it is along the way, um, you know those things help for a young kid. Mm. Absolutely, and uh, so you know being there, um, and then you formed that love in soft as a sophomore. When did it click that oh shit, you know I, I can I can get a scholarship, I can get a free education because at right. the time when we played, 
it was that free education. Now people are chasing money. You, yep. know, mm -hmm. you know, like when did that click and how did the recruiting process start? Well, it was funny. Uh, it was it was my junior year. Um, I actually uh, put a tape together with uh, one of our coaches who had played at Oklahoma and we sent it out to basically all the schools um, and instantly started getting offers. And uh, I was an early commit to Michigan State. I committed after my junior year. I didn't even, I knew I was going my whole senior year playing. So I was, I was set. Um, but I would say my junior year, I really came in. I mean, you know, when I was a sophomore, I was 6'4", 235, 240. And then my junior year, I was 275. So that was the biggest leap for me, um, you know, on and off the field of just being a dominant player, uh, you know, back in high school. Um, having the assertiveness, the strength, all that kind of stuff. And then it just continued on senior year. I mean, I was 285, and that's where I basically was coming into Michigan State, 290. So I would say my junior year. So, Kyle, did you ever play defense? In high school. You no did? No tackle? No tackle? <laughs> yeah, just no tackle. So, uh, you know, just, just like you're the of the ball. Just, whoop, whoop. Yeah, like, you know, like, because what – what, what was that? Because you typically a guy your size is going to they the coaches want to play on defense because that's and then you typically would want to play on that side. Not you personally, but a lot of players want to play on the defensive side of the ball because they get the name call all the time. Right. You yep. know, you hear cook on the tackle, cook on the tackle. What, what made you decide to go to the offensive side of the ball? I mean, your prototype for the pro level. But at that in the early stages, what? drew you to the offensive side where you ended up being at Michigan State? Um, I would say personally, I like offense more than defense because I'm, I'm in control. It's less reactive. It's more proactive. Um, there's a lot of thinking before the snap based on what the defense gives you. Um, I mean, back in high school, I just like being physical. I like beating people up. I mean, I just, I just love just If I could put you on the ground, if I could just make you feel small, you know, and, and I think that should be every offensive lineman's mentality. Yeah. I mean, if you're not a dog and you're not in it for the fight, then go sit on the sideline. Yeah. Um, and it really developed in college and then in the pros. You know, once I got into the pros, um, the love of the game became more of a chess match for me than even at any other level. You know, you're seeing Dick LeBeau. You're seeing all these different defenses every week and week out and the intricacies they throw at you. And it's just not, oh, just block this guy. Just whoever's in that gap, block them. Like, right. that's what I really enjoy doing at that level was being able to call the shots, tell everybody what to do, get everybody on the same page, whether it's protections or runs, um, and basically be able to, you know, uh, uh, stop what the defense is trying to, to do to you, which is ultimately stop you. Um, but if you can counter that, you know, big plays happen. We had some great seasons. You know, obviously both uh, professionally and in college, and I just I just love offensive line play. It's so unique. Um, you know, it truly does take five guys. You know, you could probably yeah. get away with a backside tackle on an outside play, but I mean, for the majority, it is five guys. Yeah. Right. And and to key that point, it is you know with Ju there, it's six because that running back's got to be on the same course. He stuff. better be. Man, if he sh if he changes his course halfway through, it's gonna make us look bad. <laughs> so, <laughs> stick your face in there too. I'm uh, scared. The the funny thing. So coming to Michigan State, I got a great story on that, but it's it'll be later on in your Michigan State career. Um, you can come to Michigan State and um, into because you were a year above me. So I, I had committed to Michigan State under Bobby Williams at the mm -hmm. time. And then you came to Michigan State, and that was a hellacious season, you know, from off the field issues, um, from coaching, from from on field play, off the field issues, um, you know, some just crazy craziness. How does a kid that you know come from you know Macomb, uh, Dakota High School have that us we our mentality, and then you go to something? of that sort. It was a selfish mentality at Michigan State at that time, so to speak. How do you adjust to that? Well, I mean, at that point, you know, you don't ever being a rookie and a, a freshman. I mean, you just got your head buried in the sand and you're trying everything you can, you know, you're treading water. 
uh, you know, it's a whole new world between the classes, the mandatory study halls at night, the training table, practices, off season, all that kind of stuff. And, and then you get thrown in this mix with all these guys who you don't know from all around the country and these coaches who you really don't know. I mean, you know, you know, the head coach, you know, for us, we knew the offensive coordinator, our position coach, but then you got all these other coaches that come in the mix. So, you know, you're just trying to feel at home. And then when that stuff happens, it's just like, what's going on? <laughs> and I can remember the, the saving grace for me um, was when the coaches were let go at the end of that 02 season, um, Jeff Stoutland remained and, and kept his position there, mm -hmm. which for yeah. me was big because that's one of the biggest reasons I committed to Michigan State. Um, yeah. And so the fact that he stayed was huge. Um, but then again, you know, my second year, your freshman year with the new coaching staff come in, it's like I'm a rookie all over again because I got to prove myself to all these coaches that don't know me and did not recruit me and have their own philosophies and the, their own guys they may want. Um, and so for me, I was almost a rookie when you were a rookie because we came into the same regiment, the same, we were both had the same new coaches. We both went through the same things, the new, uh, you know, uh, new training schedule, the, you know, the new, uh, winter, uh, conditioning. Summer, winter conditioning, all that kind of stuff. <laughs> yes. And you, you, you mentioned Jeff Stoutland and he's a guy that recruited me. Um, oh, yeah. love, love this guy through and through. He's, he's like, like you, he's the reason I came to Michigan state. Um, how did he, you know, like, you know, take you in and how did you embrace him and his teaching? Because you still see him doing it at the level in the NFL right now. You just saw a report that came out that that they wanted to bring in another offensive coord coordinator, but he wanted to bring his own guy. And Kingsbury. Know, they wanted to bring Cliff Kingsbury in, but he wanted to bring his own offensive line coach. And they said, uh-uh. Ain't happening. We'll get Kellen Moore or someone. We're <laughs> <laughs> right, keeping right. Stoutland. So, how did Stoutland like the? I know the hungry dogs run faster. All those different sayings and stuff. How did that resonate with you? I mean, Jeff was great. Um, you know, he had a very tough old school mentality, and and I think it helps. And I think we need more of that. Um, as far as he was hard. He was extremely hard on you. Um, you had to be damn near perfect. And you had to do it a specific way, a certain way. There was no like, okay, that'll work. Nope, you have to do it this way. And he was so hard on you. I mean, guys would break down in tears sometimes. Mm -hmm. but, but his whole philosophy back then was that if you can deal with me, whether it's on the practice field, the meeting rooms, wherever, then the games with 60, 70, 80,000 people, are easy and it right. was if, if you could deal with him on a day-to-day -day basis from practices training camp and everything in that aspect the games were a cakewalk there was nothing that could get thrown at you it doesn't matter if the game's on the line and it's third and ten and you got to block a nose guard one-on-one -on, -one on your own who's an all-american easy because right. i'm trained for this mm -hmm. you know it's it's kind of a military thing almost where they beat you down so much and build you back up that you know, you can handle anything that's thrown at you, any adversity. Is it, is it, <laughs> Stalin is a guy that would, like, great guy. And he called that little patch there. And I told these guys, and they thought I was making a pig island, that he would that he would put you guys there. But they're in uh, special teams and stuff. The line would be on pig island. Um, but he was a guy that would, like you said, would cuss you out, yell at you, make grown men almost cry. But every Friday, his wife, Allison, would bring – a dessert in for the offensive line. Yeah, she was. Oh, yeah. She was, she was our <laughs> second mother, man. See, see, that's what I was gonna say. You know, I, I never, I didn't have the honor to play for for oh, I snuck in for some dessert. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say, Jay, you, you were there every week. <laughs> of course, you did. <laughs> yes, he was. You know, you the, the little pound cakes or whatever the bun. The cobbler. The, the oh, cobbler. Yes, the cobbler. Mm -hmm. That's what Antonio always talks about too. Still, it's about cobbler <laughs> somewhere. Else. But but like you know look. Uh, I didn't get a chance to play for for Stalin, but you know, I, I was in interviewing him on the sideline. He was one of those guys, you know, that you you like to interview. Chu, you know what I'm talking about, right? As a sideline yeah. reporter. Yeah. And some guys you you look forward to interview, there's other guys you, you may not, right? As coaches. But 
with him, I, I remember interviewing him at the half at the uh, Northwestern game, and I think it was 07, the greatest comeback in NCAA history. That that game, and he six. That's, that was you remember that? That was six. Yep, that was my last. That was, that was, six. That was six. Your yeah. year. That's right. My first yep. year. That's right. Your last. And, and he talked about it in a prophetic way. It was like he knew what it was going to take and what they you guys had to do, and that. I all he I could feel coming off of his aura was like he cares about you guys, right? Yep. But he was a tough SOB. He's tough son of a bitch now. Yep. He's tough at the same time. But you know, I don't know if people understand out there that when you have a offensive line coach at the NFL or any level, by the way, but especially at the NFL level, it is extremely, I mean, it just doesn't, it's unheard of for them to have. Uh, an exclusive deal with the ownership group. So that's what Jeff Stoutland is. (laughs) If the head coach changes, the offensive line coach doesn't. This is who we're talking about. This is the Philadelphia Eagles, NFL franchise, just so you understand what we're talking about and who groomed guys like Kyle Cook, who's on the show with us today. So I, I mean, I just want to give some education to people. He's a great man, but but Kyle, he cared about you. You just talked about that, Jay. You talked about the cobbler and everything like that. You know, <laughs> I mean, like, like what, where, where, you know, from from him, did he get you prepared? I mean, you're talking about 06 now. Did he get mm-hmm. you prepared? Because I, I look at your 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 career. I was watching your career as you went into the league. Your undrafted free agent in and. So you, you had an injury, you're on injury, you know, just kind of the normal crap that we all go through as centers because we're not typically first round guys. Every now and then you get some people like that, but you weren't that. And all of a sudden, man, you just took off and had this illustrious career, you know, like the, the, the team called you the glue in 2009 for a revamped offense. So like what made that shift for you? that you were able to like set your feet and take off in your career in the NFL? Well, I mean, again, uh, undrafted guy didn't get invited to the combine. Um, you know, and, and part of that's just the, the politics of it. I mean, we didn't have a great couple years there. Joe <laughs> got fired. Um, you know, uh, I think I was second team, all big 10, um, mm-hmm. my senior year, uh, not a whole lot of accolades team wise or individual wise um went to minnesota um as a free agent and made it through training camp and got released on final cuts and got a call from cincinnati and this is how fickle the nfl is people don't understand this so i get a call from cincinnati that they want to sign me to the practice squad okay i'm ready then they're going to call me back with the details Five minutes later, they call me back and say, well, we don't know if we're going to sign you because our kicker got injured. He pulled his hamstring. We might need to sign another kicker. Okay, so I'm sitting by the phone waiting. I think 20 minutes, half hour goes by. They call and say, okay, we're going to sign you. So I got my truck and drove uh, to Cincinnati. The whole reason they wanted me there was to, A, be on the practice squad that first year. But they just wanted a tough, just a tough SOB. Um, They wanted a guy to come in there, not take any shit, and help the team. And that was my role. And that's what I did. And I think I, I proved to a lot of coaches and earned a lot of respect mm-hmm. that I can play this game a, and as the season went on and the off season that this guy's pretty smart and mm-hmm. we need to give him a chance. Um, unfortunately, my second year made the team um, was the backup uh, was suited and ready. They had told me before the game, that if things keep happening the way they are, we're not going to hesitate to put you in. Well, I ended up breaking my foot in actually pregame warm-ups. How Played you the game on warm-ups? special teams. How you got warm-ups? Yep, just kicked the back of somebody's heel and my whole toe dislocated and broke my foot. Jeez. Crazy. Wow. Big toe? Big toe. Damn. Yeah, they uh you know, you know, you you go out there warm up and then they do the four plays. First team runs a play, second yeah. team, first team, second team, kick the field goal, go into the locker room. On the last play, Andrew Whitworth, who was our starting left tackle, he was playing left guard and I was playing center. And I just kicked the back of his heel with my toe and my foot went numb. And so we're in Dallas. 
we're coming off the field. I grab our head orthopedic doctor and I said, hey, Doc Calcimo, I said, I think I just, my foot went numb. And so he grabbed Marvin Lewis and said, uh, I think Cook just broke his foot. And so we went into the locker room. They took my shoe off and my big toe was folded over the top of my foot. Oh. So it dislocated and folded over the top. So they recessed it, put it back in. And I'm on, that was back when, uh, back in the day when you had the, uh, the wedge. So I was just, that was the starting center on the wedge team for the kickoff return. And so I went out there and man, I could barely move. So they went back in the locker room and they shot me up and then I came out and I was, I limped around, but I played the rest of the game, but they didn't put me in to play center because of my injury. Yeah. Um, Finally ended up getting an MRI on it, found out that I tore a bunch of ligaments and I was done for the year. Mm. So now I'm, through my second year, one year on practice squad, one year um, of the active roster going to IR. And I'm worried, you know, like I've gotten injured. I haven't seen the field yet. Um, the draft's coming up. I remember watching the draft and they first round, good. Second round, good. Third, good. Fourth round, they draft a center. And I'm like, okay, like not the end of the world, but it's going to be a competition. Well, I get a text from my coach with the Bengals. And it was right after right after that pick. And he said, you're the starting center until proven otherwise. Mm. So I had never even seen the field, but they had enough faith and trust in me that they were naming me the center. And this was news to me. I had no idea. Right. And I never relinquished that spot. I never let it down. Once those words will, will resonate in with me forever, you know, that he texted me those things. And it was like, this is mine. I'm never letting it go. And I never did. Nobody ever beat me out for a spot. Nobody ever took my position. Um, it wasn't until, you know, I was after 30 when when basically I was done and they drafted a new guy to take over for me. But I, I've never even met him, you know, because we were never in the building at the same time. Yeah. So it, it's a, it, it was a challenging road for me. Um, but, you know, hell, I mean, everything we went through at Michigan State in those years, if anything, prepared me for it. But the thing, uh, Cook, with, with, uh, with you, you know, you were – you know, similar to like Michigan State, you, you know, that started to build the foundation. And I think when you were with the Bengals, other than the past couple, the past three years, you know, so to speak, you guys, you had that foundation cooking in Cincinnati there. That's when, you know, Ocho Cinco was there and <laughs> um, there was, uh, you know, Carson Palmer, yep. uh, your quarterback. So like, how was it like, you know, you know, playing, you know, with a quarterback like Carson Palmer and the the pressure to protect a guy like Carson Palmer and the team that you guys had, you know, what was that like? And who was, you know, what was, you know, yeah. What was that like? Well, it's funny, you know, it all comes full circle here, you know, uh, in my recruiting class at Michigan state, I was, I came in with Drew Stanton and me and Drew Stanton were roommates for all five years, good friends. Right. And, you know, Drew was Drew was one of the guys, man. He would go hang out with the offensive linemen. He was not, you know, one of these uh, uh, prima donnas or anything like that. And with uh, uh, Cincinnati, Carson was the same. Carson was an avid outdoorsman. He was a big time hunter. Um, you know, he he fit in really well with us. So he was just Kevin one of our own. Boy. Yeah. And uh, um, it's funny because then later on. Drew and Carson were teammates out in Arizona and they're still friends to this day. Right. You know, right. so it's it's funny how those two guys are so similar. And I saw that before. And then when they were teammates, they became really close friends because they're they're two of the very same guys. So it was great having Carson and Drew, both guys I was walking for. Two two great guys. Um, you know, like I said, avid outdoorsmen, um, adventure seekers, guys like that. But I mean, Carson was great. I mean, you know, he was great to us. We were great to him. That 09 year, I mean, we ran the division uh, 6 and 0 in the NFC, uh, excuse me, in the AFC North. Um, you know, he was great. What was that? What was that? Uh, the uh, QB gift to the lineman from yeah, Carson? Yeah, yeah. Well, Carson got, got a lot from I had a segue. The segue I got was the best. That was fun. <laughs> It was it was funny the uh you remember Domata? Yeah, yeah. So yeah. Domata, Domata bought a Segway and he would ride it around training camp. And that was when they just came out. We were like, that thing's cool. And I said to Carson, I said, Hey man, I said, don't waste your money on a watch or travel. I said, you should get us some of those. So that year, 09, we came out of the locker room and uh there was six <laughs> of them lined up with with ribbons on them. We all got them. Oh, sweet. <laughs> that was pretty cool. 
was, so that, was that was your coolest uh quarterback gift to segue. Yep. Yep. Oh, okay. Um, so when you were in Cincinnati, that's like when um hard knocks was coming out and being and you were on the Bengals were on hard knocks, right? I was on it twice. Yeah, you were on it twice. twice. Like, how do you like yeah. you're getting ready for the season? You know, you guys have goals at the beginning. You know, every team you sit in that team meeting room, you talk about our goal is to win the division, make a run in the playoffs, win the Super Bowl. But then you have the added, you know, cameras following you around. How do you like separate that and just focus on what you have to do as a player and just ignore that noise that's right there in your face and in your meeting rooms? Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, at first in that 09 season when we did it, it was, it was different i mean there's cameras set up in the corner of every meeting room and you're sitting there watching film listen to your coach and all of a sudden you can literally see the camera start panning and moving <laughs> um are they recording we don't know you know who knows what's on it you know as, as players we didn't know what was going to be on it until we watched it we didn't know if we were going to be shined in a good light a bad light funny <laughs> right, whatever right, you know right, right. whether we're going to get set up by somebody you just don't know <laughs> But, you know, after about a week, you get used to it, and it's it's just another thing you deal with. Uh, you almost – and sometimes it's bad. You forget about it, which isn't good, because when you got a camera on you 24-7, you forget the camera's there, you know. <laughs> so – and then by the time it came around the second time, uh, I forget the year that it came around again. Um, a lot of us had been through it, a handful of us that were still with the organization. Um, and so it was just one of those things that we had done already, and – you know, we could just see through it as far as not seeing that the cameras are there, even though they're there, just going about it in a business, um, you know, perspective of the whole thing. Nothing wrong with that as Chu takes a swig. Hey, I'm with you, Chu, but like people <laughs> want to know, there's a question here about coach. Please tell us about coach Marvin Harrison from Doug. Mar Marvin Lewis. Lar Lewis. Mar Marvin Lu oh, Harrison. What the hell am I talking about? Marvin <laughs> Lewis. <laughs> You know, sometimes relationship with Marv. Marv was great. I mean, Marv was a player's coach. I mean, he'd been in the league a long time. Great-minded coach. Um, but, you know, every coach has got their 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 norms. You know, like the post-game speech always falls back on the same thing kind of way. But when you're there, you know, when you're there seven years, you've, you've heard and seen it all, you know. Um, but as far as, a, as far as a coach, great coach. As far as a man, great man. Um, you know, would not have traded my experience there for the world. Uh, we had some great years, had one or two not so great years, but as far as the coaching goes and, uh, the culture that was there, uh, was great. You know, uh, he's just a great guy and I was very fortunate to be able to play for him. But what was that? What was that, that with, with Marvin now, I, I you know, I got to go into, and the thing too, with Marvin, by the way, he was also on the list to become after John Ellis. Fire D'Antonio beat him out also for uh, the coach at Michigan State. He was also on the list to come to Michigan State. Okay. Um, yeah. But yeah. Mar the, the knock on him, never went in a playoff game. Right. You know, like, what was that like? Like, do you, what what was the hindrance of it? Why couldn't you guys, as because you were there, like, yep. why couldn't you guys get over? I know that one season Carson got hurt against the Steelers. Um, yeah, that was, oh, that was oh 05. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah, before it, but like, what was that like hurdle to get over? What was that, that mental block? It's tough, you know. I mean, out of the seven years I was there and the five I started, we were in the playoffs four. Right. Um, we only uh, one, one time as a starter, we missed playoffs, so it was the 2010 season. Um, and it just seems like it, you know, and it, it's one of those things you go back, shoulda, coulda, woulda. Um, you know, in some of those games, we were playing uh, the Chargers at home. We played New York at home. We played uh, Houston on the road. You know, I know that New York game and I know that uh, San Diego game. Um, man, we were running the ball like crazy. Had four, five, six yards of pop. And then all of a sudden, they want to start passing it. And, th and that's personally how I felt, you know. And yeah. I don't know what causes that. Yeah, we were winning, and all of a sudden, we start losing at the last second. But we're throwing the ball and going three and out or, you know, a, a series stalls after six plays. Um, and some of us didn't get it, you know, especially my my last year, 2013. I believe we played the Chargers in that game. And a bunch of us were upset, 
uh, just for the simple fact that, I mean, we were killing it. I mean, guys had six yards of carry like it was nothing. And then all of a sudden we get into this pass happy stuff and it was just like, I don't get it. You know, um, I'm glad they've overcame that. I'm glad since, you know, Joe Burrow's been there and some of these new guys, Jamar Chase, that they've made these runs. You know, they're a, they're they're more of a dominant team than even what we were. Um, you know, because what got us to that point to get to the playoffs was us running the ball. Um, you know, Carson has had a thumb injury one year. Um, you know, we had Andy Dalton that came in that was young, a oh, rookie yeah. and a second year player. And and we took care of business up front. And that's what that's what that's what got us into the playoffs. Cause you guys both know the hardest point of that NFL season is just getting there. Yeah. Just getting yeah, into that's the it. playoffs. That's it. <clears throat> So what, what was it like? Did you feel um, Chad Johnson was more of a distraction or did you feel? There like- we go. <laughs> Ocho Cinco. No, Come on. Know, hey, hey, you know, Chad was great. You know, I can't say anything bad about Chad. You know, you guys know how it is. I mean, you look at college now, right? <laughs> right. Uh, it, it, it's a business. I mean, you know, the guy changes his name and now he's got all New Jersey sales. <laughs> You know, everybody wants a piece of it. You know, everybody wants brilliant. to be smart, brilliant. You know, yeah. we were actually, I'll never forget. So we were playing Buffalo in Buffalo and he's got his jersey on, Ocho Cinco. And we're in team stretching and warm ups for the game. And the NFL and the coaches came out and they told me to change his jersey. They weren't going to allow him to wear the Ocho Cinco, even though he legally changed his name. The reason was it was because uh, it was during the middle of a season. And unless he paid Reebok, I think it was Ooh. Reebok at the time. Unless he paid yeah. Reebok for the yeah. jerseys that were still out there with Johnson on them, <laughs> then he couldn't switch yet, and he hadn't done that. <laughs> because, oh. because think about it. Once once he changed his name to Ocho Cinco, all those jerseys got to come off the shelf, and they got to reprint new ones. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> Which in the NFL, we get a little bit of royalties from our jersey yeah. sales. So, oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> he wanted to sell both, right? Which he eventually yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> No, but Chad, Chad was a great guy. I mean, very passionate. If you did see anything of a negative light with him, it's because he wanted the ball. It's because he knew I'm open. If you throw me the ball, I'll get it. You know, and sometimes, you know, there's 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 other guys on the field. There's other plays get called to go to a certain certain position. And and I get it. They get frustrated sometimes, um, you know, but but he wanted to win. Throw me the ball. I'll catch it. You know, I'm open every time. And 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 you want guys like that on your team. You need guys like that on your team. Mm-hmm. You know, when the game's on the line, you need that guy because he wants the ball. If you get a bunch of guys who are timid, I don't want the ball. It's third and ten. If we don't get it, we're out. We're done. You know, you you don't you you don't want that. We can't have that. Bringing this full circle because you got a guy by the name of Chad Johnson, Ocho Cinco, who actually played his college ball in. Corvallis, Oregon, in mm-hmm. which with a guy by the name of Jonathan Smith throwing the ball to him. Yeah. You know, like what 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 does this feel like to you? You know, you played with Chad Johnson, you played at Michigan State, obviously. Uh, but now Chad Johnson's old quarterback is now the head coach at Michigan State University. No, I'm excited. I mean, we, we got we gotta be excited with the way things are changing now in the college football game um you know some things i agree with some things i don't uh you got to stay relevant you got to get these fresh faces in here especially when unfortunate circumstances happen with other coaches you know Mm -hmm. and it's just a history i mean it's it's not just msu it's all over there's certain you know whether it's a bad season or off field incident or whatever you know change is inevitable it's going to happen um but to get the right guy in there to do the job at the national level to compete with all these other schools, not just in players, but in all the other things that are out there that we never had to worry about, whether it was NIL deals, whether it was, you know, you know, even the, the recruiting has come so much, you know, that straight. Cause you're dealing with it right now. The recruiting has become <laughs> so much different than what we did. I mean, I remember being on campus and just being happy to be there now. The kids are getting photo shoots and all we wanted to do was go to Rick's. Yeah, I mean it's crazy. (laughs) All we wanted to do was go to Rick's and the Land Shark. Yeah, there you go. That is it. That is it. I I see a a a question here from one of my guys, Lawrence Paris. How did your routine change once they told you that you were going to be the starting center in your position? 
You know, I don't think it changed a whole lot. I mean, my mindset was always, you know, my mindset wasn't just to make the NFL. My mindset wasn't just to make a roster. You know, it it was to be remembered and 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 um, you know, I didn't it, nobody wants to be that guy where it's like, oh yeah, was he on a team? Was he not on a team? That kind of thing. Like I want a legacy, you know, for, you know, not only for what I work so hard for personally, but for my family and everything else. And to be able to do something that you love doing. I mean, genuinely love doing. Um, so I wouldn't say my routine changed because I was on that path no matter what. I mean, I wouldn't have cared if they drafted a center in the first round. I mean, I would have gave I would have gave it all uh, just to try to beat him out. Now, we all know the politics of it. Would I beat a first rounder out? Probably not, you know. Right, right. <laughs> but He's gonna, That first round is going to get every opportunity. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is and then so. This is how so it is. The two of you. And uh, Tony, Tony L, if you could get ready for this year, um, the two of you, you know, said, oh, you know, Jay, you're picking on the centers, you're picking on the centers um, be, because this is what happens, right? If As a running back, you score a touchdown, right? All you want to do is for your lineman to pick you up in the air and you can show it. I know you're going to show it. And do whatever you want to do. Oh, yeah. What did I get? I scored a touchdown and my center – Knocked me out pretty much, bloodied my lip. Can we show that picture? Oh, <laughs> hey, much deserved. Well, hey, there you go, Cal. That's what I'm talking about. Buckle it up, Jay. You buckle it up, buddy. You mean, I mean, come on, can a guy get a break? <laughs> You got you got that jaw popped, huh? Jumped in there. Right. That's probably the hardest hit he took all season. That probably was. <laughs> I, I, I remember. I, um, so, two things. I know we got to let you go, Kyle, but two things. One, I remember specifically for me, you know, being, you know, around guys like you, you know, blue collar guys, the guys that, you know, just strap your boots on, put your heart on, go to work. And, for when it was like, oh shit, I really got to get in the playbook. Was I came on the side, you know, I went in the game once I was a, a rush in 04, and I was in and I heard the defense yelling, 30s in, it's a run, it's a run, 30s in, because I didn't know pass protection. <laughs> so I came back on the sideline, and you guys went to Stoutland. Like every time he, the words you guys are saying is not, I can't no. say here. He's in there. He said, no, it's a run. He better pick his effing pass game protection up. Blah, blah. And I'm sitting there like, okay, I need to learn the pass protection here. So I'm like just one sided here. <laughs> but yeah, you know, some, you know, great teaching. Thank you for schooling, Choo Choo. Hey, yeah, true. I know 63, 64 protection. Yeah. <laughs> Kyle, you were in a frat. What made you join a frat? Other than that, we, used to, go to your, we, used, to, we used to go to your guys' place for Wine Wednesdays. <laughs> yeah, Wine Wednesdays. Well, no, remember a couple of the uh, a couple of the GAs in the uh, equipment room were in it. Yeah, and they, they yeah. Because I was roommates with Drew, so I probably got I probably got the invite because I was with Drew. They just wanted us to be members. We really didn't have to do much, you know. Right. <laughs> but, but yeah, I mean that was fun. It was it was something that was that was unique. But we didn't have to go through all like the Hell Week and. Uh, you know the initiations and all that kind of stuff. Who the hell's gonna like, tell you? Who the hell's gonna tell you to do this? Right. <laughs> right. But oh, 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 there's a great story. Um, I was just um in Crystal Mountains. You know, had the opportunity. My wife and I met up with you, your wife, and your family out there at the resort, and we were talking about, you know, the combines coming up now. Oh, yeah. And you, you said you didn't get invited to the combine, but you were so worried about your weight. You know, going into as a center, going into right. you know, so like, tell, and you told the story about. I told you the story. I'll tell it again. Did, so go ahead. <laughs> yeah, straight. You'll get a kick out of this, right? So all right, I gotta hear this. <laughs> so I am. I'm training hard, and you know, I can't keep weight on, and I'm down in like yeah. the. I'm in like the two eighties. My, you know, I'm. You're what, not a fat ass. Old. We know that. We're, you're not a fat ass. And uh, I remember asking. Uh, you remember Coach Hoke? Yeah, I asked him like, "What can I do?" And he was like, "Well, just drink a beer." He literally his advice to me was drink a beer every night before you go to bed to help you slow down your metabolism. <laughs> well, anyways, the, the I didn't get invited to the combine, and we had the, uh, the MSU Pro Day, and uh, I was really worried about my weight. 
and you know, the NFL is a big business. I mean, when yeah. you go to these pro days, when you go to, for anybody out there that does not know, um, <laughs> the, the pro days, the combine, I mean, they are, they're measuring the distance between your thumb and your pinky. They're measuring your arm length. They're measuring your wingspan, your chest span, uh, height, weight, every number they can think. It's a big business. They're going to invest a lot of money in you. Mm-hmm. Um, and these numbers reflect on where you're at height weight 40 all that kind of stuff and i'm just like i'm lean right now i need some weight and i told jay you this i said how competitive it is at that point and how many guys are vying not only you know to to be invited to the combine but to just get invited to a training camp and then therefore you know just have an opportunity just to have an opportunity is so hard that I literally, I told you, I said, I actually literally contemplated, and I actually went to the bank and bought rolls of quarters, okay? And I was going to put them in my spandex so I could gain a pound. I'm not lying to you. I swear to God. Hey, and, and you know, but you know, hey, I never did it. You know the reason I didn't do it, okay? Because I'm, I'm sitting there, I told Jay, I'm like, could you imagine if I had to put a roll of quarters in my spandex, <laughs> in my groin, and they had broke open while I'm weighing in, and they all just <laughs> fell out? <laughs> oh, man. So for, fortunately, I never did it. I, I contemplated it because, you know, hey, I'm not going to lie. You, you're talking about, you know, one more repetition on the 225, a right. tenth of a second on the 40, an inch more in Half the vertical. A million dollars. Three you know, you're, you're, a million dollars. Yeah, I $2 mean, million dollars. You got to be 6'4, 295. Uh, luckily, I weighed in at 291, but you know, there, there's a, there's a, there's a, there's a, for the most part, there's a body size you have to be. You know, you got to weigh this much. Mm-hmm. And, and you get a guy like, for instance, like Jason Kelsey. Okay, with the Eagles. Like Jason's an undersized center, 6'2, 280, 285. Um, and after he got his opportunity, he can stay there. I mean, if I was playing right now and I was 285 because I'm a vet and I'm in there and I've 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 proven myself, nobody thinks differently about it. Mm-hmm. But when you're a guy who's never played before and you're 280, 285, people are like, Oh, he's kind of light. Maybe I shouldn't put him in there. So right. until you earn that respect. You know, there's some guys in the NFL who can be undersized, quarterback, whatsoever. But for the most part, quarterbacks are 6'4", 6'5", 225, you know. Uh, You know, there's the outliers who are 6'1", you know, and things like that. So, you know, for me, it was one of those things is like, this is this is my dream Um, ever since high school. You know, even going back and you asked me earlier, J.U., um, I can remember in high school telling people I'm going to play in the NFL someday. And I had a I had a good buddy of mine who told me he was like, just make sure you play in college first. And that resonated with me for a long time. You know, like I'm here to prove people wrong. Right. I'm here to prove myself right and prove people wrong. You know, a little chip on your shoulder, bigger dog in a fight. Let's go. Let's get it. You know. Man, there I, it is. I absolutely love it, man. I mean, this is this is enlightening. <laughs> and I hope there's a lot of young football players, athletes, people listening. To the wise words coming out uh, of our our Hall of Fame, in my opinion, we got to get you into that, Kyle. Yeah, I appreciate you it. You know, Thanks. Kyle Cook. Thanks. You know, I mean, you're you're an awesome uh, guy, a great player, and just a better human being. So we absolutely thank you and, and love you being on this show, man. Like you got to get come back. Do you get to any games during the season? I haven't seen you around in a while. Well, we got it was a couple of years ago. We went to some games last year. Uh, we didn't end up making it to any one of the, the uh, moves, we had a, a uh, we had a house down in Florida that got flooded in the hurricane um, a couple of years ago. So that took up a lot of my fall. Fort but Myers. Oh, we're my. down, we're actually just, just South Fort Myers. Yeah, we're down in Naples area. So we had oh, just oh, bought man. a house down there with my mom and dad and it Naples. got flooded out. Yeah. Oh, uh-huh. that's really nice. Okay. 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 That's it. That seven, eight, you know, okay. That is. Yeah, Cookie's sophisticated. He went from that <laughs> blue collar to the <laughs> Dakota to Naples. Okay, yeah, I got you. Yeah. Okay, where are you at, Greg? Yeah, we can bring you up to to the booth anytime, man. Like to have you because he I mean, said where you at, at in the broadcasting business. My goodness, what the heck? He asked where you at right now, Stray. Where am I? I'm in yeah. Florida. I'm in. Florida. I know where at though. Uh, the the Bradenton area. Okay, 
Yeah. Just like we spent, I spent a lot of time up. I spent a lot of time up in Sarasota. Right down the road. Yeah, right down, right the, down road. the road. Yeah, mm-hmm. exactly. Sarasota, oh. Bradenton, Tampa, the whole deal. We're over here. Got a couple boys playing football around the corner from here. Yeah, it's some school down there, but whatever. We're hanging out, doing our thing, man, and like loving to have you on this is part of MSU, man. Like, thank you for coming on, and love to have you back sometime. But let's get together next time you come to East Lansing for a football. Game. For sure, for sure. No, I appreciate yeah. it, guys. Thank you for having me. And uh, anytime, anytime I can help out with anything, man, I'm, um, I bleed green. <laughs> Definitely, Cookie. Appreciate you, man. And Choo Choo wouldn't be Choo Choo. If you didn't have those years running behind you, Cookie. Oh, stop you. it. If I, was, if I was only the smartest guy, I may believe you. No, if, yes, <laughs> only if. The if you second, you're the second. If you didn't knock second. me out, if you didn't knock yeah. me out in the game, then that's why it's you. pissed off. That's what it is. We got the truth. Uh, uh, Kyle Cook, everybody, you know, absolutely. Thank you for coming. Chu, that was a great interview. Uh you know, this is just this is what we're talking about. Spartan dogs come and do what Spartan dogs do. Um, just breaking down his career path is going to be an inspiration to a lot of people. Damn. Okay, I see you. Halo sent another v- new viewer coming in there. Hi guys, Halo sent me in. <laughs> really? Hey, yeah. Francesca. Uh, okay. Halo. Hey, Halo. Halo Publishing. Uh, he, he's 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 been sending us viewers left and right. We we love Halo. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Rashad Howard, what's that? A tiger? Another great show. Thank you. Listen, Chu, great show. Um, got got a big show coming up on Thursday. I mean, I, I you know don't want to get to teasing that too much because I mean, what the hell? You know, we got we got a guy by the name. You guys remember the old poster back in the day? Fire and ice. If you were thinking MSU basketball, fire and ice. That's the only hint we're going to give you. And then we're going to talk about it on social media. Don't forget to follow us on. This is part of MSU on all of our social medias. That's X, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, all that stuff. Okay, shoot. And look, I need you to bring your A game because I'm going to see how much you know about hoops. Yeah. All right. We ready. <laughs> we all ready. Fire ready. and ice. Fire and ice. Not where there's smoke, the there's fire. Not where there's smoke, there's fire. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Man, Chu, look, we're going to get up out of here. We're going to wrap it up. There's a lot of good stuff we're going to talk about in the future, but in the past, like, look, I can't I can't get the, the women's gymnastics off my mind. Congratulations, back-to-back Big Ten championships, and we're going to get everybody else going. So, for J.U. Culquick, I'm Jason Strayhorn. This is Sparta MSU. Everybody, have a good night. God bless, and go green. Go white. The show is produced by Tony LaBarbera, Tony Costella, and Process Driven Consulting. Additional support is provided by Brendan Duravage. On-location technical support provided by Good Fruit Video. Be sure to follow our host Jason Strayhorn, J.U. Culprit, and Otis Wiley on social media. To stay up to date with all the latest This Is Sparta news, please like and subscribe by visiting our link tree and tell a friend to do the same. Thank you for your support, and as always, go green.